In this episode, I got a Sony SLV R5. This is uh, the first Super VHS machine that Sony produced, and it's one of their better ones that they produced, but it has some common problems. This one has three faults that we're going to deal with in this episode. So I hope you guys enjoy it. We've got a power supply problem, we've got a mechanical problem, and we have a hi-fi audio problem. So let's get started. Here we have an SLV R5 Sony in for service. Before even powering it up, I'm gonna take the top off it. Judging from the two screws that I just removed from this thing being different, I can get the feeling I'm not the first person who's been into this unit. Also the fact that the, the screws that normally would go in the back, normally there's the, the screws on the side that hold the side panel on and there's another screw in the back. You have to pull the side panels off. Uh, someone's nicely removed two of the screws. So I'm not the first person to get into this one, but this one was brought in to be repaired. So we're going to take a look at it and see exactly what it's doing. Well, the reason I want to open up the Sony is before uh, actually plugging it in and trying a tape or anything is because I want to check to make sure that the uh, the tape guide is not jammed. Common problem on these SLV R5s are all these Sonys. Well, the blue gear problem for one, but the P5 tape guide freezes and as you can see the P5 tape guide has frozen. Blue gear is not broken, but this guide is frozen on this one so when a guide freezes like that a lot of times it'll chew up these gears so the first thing I have to do on this is unseize this guide and then we'll then try powering it up and see if the unit works but first things first let's get in and remove that guide a couple ways to do it easiest way is just to use a pair of needle nose pliers to remove the guide or a uh, socket wrench but I don't think I've got one that's the right size for this one it's not a quarter inch I don't think no smaller I used to have the socket for that looks like someone's been into this too because they put red paint on top of the the nut But it's easy enough to take this out with just a pair of pliers. And then we just have to lift this guide off, twist it back and forth a bit, and pull. And it will lift off. Remove the washer. I have to clean the dried lubricant out of the bearing here and off of the post. Once we clean that up, re-lubricate it and then reset the guide. So what I'm doing is I just took a, a Q-tip and I cut it in half. It just happens to be that it's the exact size that will push through and clean up any of the guns that's left behind in the bearing. And then I can pull it through. As you can see, it's now nice and clean. Now we can put some Molly coat grease onto the bearing shaft. I'm 
going to reset the guide, replace the washer, Now the height on this is critical. If you're too high, you'll curl the bottom edge of the tape, and if you're too low, you'll curl the top edge of the tape. So it's important to get the height correct, which is done by playing a tape and adjusting it accordingly. Okay, now that that guide is free, let's uh, plug the unit in and see whether it powers up. We have power, so I think. I see lights, so let's load a tape and see whether anything works. And there's no drum operation. No motor operation. Just the loading motor. The drum motor and the capture motor are not working. And that indicates a probably a power supply issue. So time to remove the power supply and investigate. See what's wrong with the power supply. These units are all, power supplies are bad on all these things at this point in time. They're full of those crappy Elna caps that leak, spew their guts all over the board, and uh, cause all kinds of headaches. So let's get the uh, power supply out and repair that, because I can guarantee that the power supply on this thing is going to require a rebuild. They just all do. Yeah, these are going to be bad. You can see it's been hot. Okay, time to uh, start checking out the power supply. You can see where electrolytic has been leaking right in here. Right, you can see corrosion. So there's going to be bad capacitors in this unit that need to be dealt with. So let me get dealing with those. And uh, there'll probably be a handful that need to be changed. These look to be all originals. A couple caps down in here are gonna be bad for sure. We'll just take those ones out. C216 is one. Uh, C220 should be another one. For sure those ones are bad. The total time to repair one of these units, is, it, it was, well, by the time I actually got working on it, I did the a little bit at the beginning, uh, did the the, uh, the bearing and stuff, but I had some other stuff to do around the house here, had my dinner and stuff. So I actually got working on this thing just after 9 o'clock, and it was about 11.30 when I finished it. So about two and a half hours is the amount of time I had to spend on this unit from start to finish to deal with the, well, the guide, for one. The power supply, got that finally going only to find out that there was no hi-fi audio and the hi-fi audio board also had to be rebuilt. So a lot of work goes into these units, but these units also command quite high dollars on the used market when they've been serviced because uh, people that are archiving tapes, they're looking for a high-end machine like this as a playback machine, and these are one of the better ones on the market for playing tapes. And that's the one that's been leaking. It's a 470 at 10 volts. 
I don't need to do an ESR test on this one because well, we know it's bad, but I'll do it anyway just to show you guys how bad it is. To give you an idea what these units go for, a broken SLV R5 that is non-functional typically sells for around $200 on eBay these days. And functional right ones are a lot more than that. I would think. Yeah. Completely open. That's one of many. There are several caps on this thing that really do need to be replaced. Let's start replacing them here and uh, see whether I can get this thing to fire up and get the motors to come back on. But there's a, say there's, there'll be a bunch of them in here that need to be done. So let me go and look through my collection. That says a long life. It's, um, it's an, it's, El this is an Elna. Elna made crappy caps. So let me go find some new caps. And just because I know I'm going to get a rise out of some trolls, I'm bringing out the Klein snips. Just for you guys that get annoyed when I use them. Galtacek C220. This one here is also likely bad. This is in the negative supply for the display and stuff. This is another one that's gives a lot of trouble as does uh, these ones over here I don't know that I've got all the values so I seem to be running a little bit low on uh, caps these days I haven't been to the, the shop to stock up for a while it's um, it's become more of a hassle to go and get parts now with this whole COVID thing because they only let like two people in the store and uh, I don't really feel like standing out in the rain and waiting for 45 minutes to an hour to get into the store, which seems like every time I go to the shop, that's how long the wait is to get in to buy something. I go down to pick up a couple values of caps or whatever I'm looking for, and I'm, I'm waiting around, standing around, waiting in line to get in. That cap fell right out because one of the legs on it is completely broken. As you can see, that one is completely completely open and that was a negative lead I believe fell off that one yes negative lead this one is um, 120 microfarads at 50 volts I won't have a 120 but I'll probably have a 100 which should be close enough
Okay, um, I, these other ones here are probably also bad. We'll just remove these ones. I gotta take out the, there's glue down the side here that they attach two of them together. And usually these ones do go bad. C201 and C202. One's in the negative supply and one's in the positive supply. But these ones do normally fail. We'll take them out and check them out and see. That one there is uh, bad. Again, another one that uh, one of the legs is just blown right off of it. This is another 120 at 50 volts. We'll change that to a 100 because again, that's all I'm going to have. And that's not even one of the ones that I was on soldering. I got to do 204 as well, but this one here is one that always goes bad. That's why I took it out. And this other number to it here. Yeah, quite often this one goes bad. These two big ones. So this one here is uh, let's see if this one's bad. We'll test this one. This one might be okay. It's a different brand. This one's a, a Matsushita and this cap is probably okay. It's a 15, 1500? Uh, to 1500 to 25 volts. I think these ones might be okay on this. It typically was just the Elna, Elna garbage caps that were uh, were so problematic on all these machines. We'll just measure the uh, whoops. We'll just measure the ESR. Oh, it looks bad. Yeah, that are my meters. You know what's happening here? My probe is going bad. I gotta repair my probe. Let's try that again. Yeah, 0 0.02. Yeah, this cap is okay. I think both of these uh, these Panasonic caps are okay. It's just the Elna ones, the brown ones that are the ones that are so bad on these units. I really love working on these power supplies because it's impossible to see what you're doing unless you bring a light right in. Should put my little headlight on. Then I'll see what I'm doing.
I think we'll try this with these caps replaced. I'll put this power supply back together and we'll put it in the unit and see whether I get any different uh, any different response. Because generally it's only a few of them that go bad. They don't all fail. Just a few that cause the majority of the problems. Okay, let's see what it, uh, what it does. Does it do anything more than it did before? Size go boom. I don't see any kicking of the drum. So I think we still have a, another problem here, but let's just see. Normally the drum kicks. Yeah, so there's still no power to the drum motor. Loading motor and cassette loading motor have got power. There's no power getting to the drum motor or the capstan motor. We'll remove the bottom and take a look under the bottom. I know somebody's been in this unit because there's different colored screws and the fact that there was only a two screws holding the top on. So let's uh, open the bottom up and see whether somebody's been in here unplugging things and didn't plug them back in. Here's our motor supply board here. Uh, these these caps also go bad in the hi-fi audio. Have you guys watched my? I have an SLVR5, so if you watch my repair on mine, I I did the full the full meal deal on mine. I think things I look for when I open up the bottom is to see things like if the uh, the, the uh, tie wrap here has been cut, because nobody ever replaces them when they've been in there, including me. So that's always a good indicator that nobody's been into the bottom. Or at least nobody's had that circuit board out. Okay, we're going to check the IC protector on here to make sure it's not popped. Uh, PS202, the power is off by the way. Uh, PS202 is right here. It's an IC protector, which is basically a little fuse. There's a couple of them on this unit. We'll check this one first and see if this one popped. Yeah, it looks like it's okay. That one's good. I'm just going to uh, resolder the regulators down here on the power supply. These linear regulators, these are actually the switch that turns the power on and off, like for the different voltages. They are a, a switchable regulator, and sometimes you get a bad connection on them, and it can cause voltages to be lost. Plus the fact that there's still corrosion on the board here that got in there from when that capacitor popped. So I haven't even considered that yet, but let's resolder these and see whether it makes any difference to the uh, unit when I've powered up. Normally these units, when you power them up, you'll see the motor, the drum motor will kick when you hit the power switch, which it hasn't done. And it smells like the back end of a tuna schooner here. And of the fish caps, fish oil caps that have all failed. Yeah, I know I put a bridge there. We'll fix that.
this is where I'm most concerned that the damage is going to be is right in here. So let's just clean this mess up so we can see if there's any foil that's open because I'm sure there probably is a trace here that's that's open from the uh, corrosive capacitor piss that went on the board. Watch watch YouTube take my video down for saying that. Capacitor pissed on the board. Yeah, yum. Look at that. Look at all the pitting in here. Just pathetic. So we'll bridge over these with some good old solder. Yeah, this one here is also, if we look, if we look right down, where's my pick, my dental pick here, and uh, if we look right in here, this looks like this is nicely corroded in here, this, this trace, and this could be corroded up here too, you see, and all it takes is some of that crap to uh, create an open, and then you lose your voltage. This is going to look as bad as my power supply on mine when I'm done. Because mine was in bad shape too. Mine was in real bad shape. Uh, is that a trace there? I think that is, that... is that a trace or not? That is a trace. Yeah, there's a trace. There's a trace that goes right down here too. You see? All the way from... Where am I here? Down here. That's uh Yeah, in pretty pretty bad shape. I'm convinced that the, the, the problem on this is in the power supply here for sure. When I get the power supply fixed, this unit will work well, sort of. I'm sure there's other problems with this unit besides the power supply. Uh, I'm pretty confident that the uh, there's going to be uh, caps in the hi-fi audio board that are going to have to be dealt with. But this is a customer's machine. It's a guy that's in the uh, video archiving business. My competition, in other words. So, And he wants it fixed because this is his livelihood. So we're going to get this thing working and get it in ship shape. So I'm going to repair the traces. I'm going to I'm going to test the ones for continuity. And make sure that I've got continuity here. So I got my little heavy duty magnifying glasses on so that I can see the fine traces and uh, measure them. So that one goes through. This is a ground and it goes through back through to here and it's good. So that one along the edge is good. Uh, this other one here. From this capacitor, it's good to there, and it's good back to here. It looks like it's going back to there, and it's good to there. Uh, the next one over here is this capacitor that goes through. It's not on this one. It goes around here, and it goes through to here. that open? 
that's good there and that comes along down here and it ends up on that pin there pin five so we, we have continuity here and this other one over here that I was questioning it goes back around to here got continuity there got continuity there got continuity over to here this one's got continuity to there continuity over to here And this one goes through. Where does this one go? Looks like it goes through to here. Does that go through to there? Where the hell does that one go? It's hard to see. It doesn't go to that. Where does that one go? I need a stronger magnification on there so I can see. Get my head right in there. It looks like it goes it looks like it goes to this pin right here but I don't get continuity but it's really hard to see because that transistor goes definitely to that this transistor goes definitely over to here is it this lead it might be this lead here ah that goes under the transistor okay that goes under this transistor here this leg goes under here and comes up over there that's where it goes Continuity wise, this one goes over to here. What about our fuse? This is the fuse here. And that comes in from this capacitor. So that's good there. Okay. How does our end connectors look? <clears throat> Do we have good continuity on them, I wonder? Let's just take a close look here. look okay these connectors that one there looks like it might be a bit cracked that pin there that pin looks flaky I'm gonna redo I'm gonna redo the connector and then we'll try this thing and see whether I get any uh, anything different My soldering iron is a little bit big for this, but we will do the job. It's going to be careful. Okay, power supply is reinstalled. We'll turn the unit on and hit the power button and see whether there, anything happens. I see nothing going on here. Normally we get a kick of the head drum. Oh, okay. Well, I guess not, but guess what? It's turning. It's playing. 
now I have to uh, adjust this guide that's out of, out of whack because for sure, for sure it's going to be damaging a tape. If I roll the tape back, we'll watch tape the writing up. Therefore, the guide needs to go down. This is a lot easier if you've got the small nut driver for it, but I don't have one that size, unfortunately. Not anymore, anyway. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm just See the tape. I was watching the tape curl on the on the guide itself. Okay, a little low I can see, or a little high still I can see the tape is curling up a bit on the bottom, on the bottom edge, I'm looking down here and the tape was curling a bit on the bottom you can still see it's still curling a bit on the bottom so we'll just take the guide down a little more to stop the tape curl and then when I go into reverse search the tape should run smooth A little too low now. So I'll put my I'll put my production tape in. We'll see how my tape looks. I can turn the sound on on this. And it's interesting because I don't hear any sound. From the hi fi soundtrack. And I know that there is. I know that there. Oh, there it goes. Uh, maybe the tracking's a bit off. We'll check the tracking. Yeah, our, our alignment is just a smidge off. Uh, I don't have this triggered, but you can see here that the alignment is just a bit off. So let's see if we can tweak this. Looks like it's at the bottom.
I think the hi-fi board may have a problem on this too. Okay, I got my color bar tape in, which I know is made on a machine that is good. And uh, the waveform is pretty flat. If I push down on one of the guides here, just to throw the uh, just to throw the RF off enough so that it kicks into the linear track, you can hear the, the tone on there. We have no hi-fi uh, soundtrack because there's a problem with the hi-fi board, which will require some more diagnostics. Video-wise, though, looking good. So now I got to get into the the hi-fi board on this unit. You can hear it popping and clicking there when I stop it too. Uh, I had to do that on mine. The hi-fi board was it's in here, and the hi-fi board on mine was also bloody awful. Uh, just there, they've got more of those Elna garbage capacitors on it, and uh, they're going to be shot. Whenever you have an SLVR5, you got to keep that in mind that you're going to be changing a few capacitors in the thing. Don't don't got to do them all, but uh, you got to do the ones that are uh, causing you problems. That's for sure. So we'll take the front off. Front on these ones unplugs, so the controls. And they got this flex cable here. You got to be careful with that because that flex cable will break eventually from just opening and closing it. It's the weakness of these machines. The uh, audio board is going to be over here, so let's flip this board out of the way. Remove the arrow mark screws. Should be three of them. The whole back flips up, if I'm not mistaken. Flip up this board, and then flip that board out of the way, and our audio board is that one. That's the Hi-Fi audio board on this. Tuner board, audio Hi-Fi. And these ones are going to be problematic, guaranteed. We'll measure the ESR on this. Um, show you the bad ones that go bad. It's the small, the small red ones are the ones that go bad. Are these these ones here, right? These these ones in here are going to be bad. This one's probably okay. As is this one here. These ones here, uh, the blue ones are going to be okay. These red ones here, they are all, I think they're all the same value too. They're they're 10 microfarad at 25 volt. They're all 10 at 25 volt. Now that's a 4.7. I think it's just the 10s that go bad, actually. Let's just measure them, if I remember, because I did one of these before, right? So here's the first one. And uh, it is completely open. That one's open. And the second one here, it's also open. Uh, this is the, is this the 4.7? There's another one beside it here. I think this one's going to be open too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that one's open. Uh, there's a 4.7 down here. I think that's a 4.7. Or is that a 10? The 4.7. So this one, this one's probably okay. Is it open? No, that one's open too. That one's open. That one's open. Let's see, the meter is okay. These are all open. All these, all these red caps, they're all open. So they all have to be changed. All these ones here for sure. How about these other ones over here? The big one is 0.3. That's probably okay. 
Uh, 2.4, that one's going to be bad. That one's open. That one's open. 7.3, that one's bad. All these red caps have to be changed, every one of them. Well, I do have a few. I even got some from Main Electronics. It shows how old these are. Because they've been closed for you know, a number of years. The guy that owned the store died, and his son didn't want to take over the business and shut it down. So, uh, I mean, I got some uh, lots of 4.7s, and I got lots of 10s. I should have, I think, enough to uh, repopulate this board. So let's begin. See if we can get this thing, see if we can get this unit working. One's a 10, so let's grab a 10 and uh, we'll. It's a 4.7, and that's just this other one. These are two. These two are 4.7. Wonderful, that wonderful stench of fish oil. Kind of offsets the smell of the the, the the skunk that I can smell, which is either a real skunk or somebody growing grass. Of course, there's uh, plenty of grass being grown, and I'm not talking the type that you have in your front lawn. There's plenty of grass being grown here in Canada now that it's legal. But I know there's a neighborhood skunk around because I saw him. I saw him last summer, just up the street from me. I thought it was a black cat at first until I saw that white stripe down its back and it's like, oh, it's, it's a, it's a skunk. Like four doors down from me.
all of a sudden having raccoons take up residence in your garden shed doesn't seem so bad after all if you compare it to having a skunk take up residence in your garden shed. Now that's a problem. Especially if you don't know he's there and you go in there on a, like a Sunday morning and you get out your lawnmower you get a very rude awakening. These caps are leaking onto the board and damaging the traces. This one is another So I got uh, three more to do on this board, and that should that should have all the caps done on this board that need to be done. It's just these Elna uh, crap caps that are on here. Probably Elma that made all those troublesome uh, surface mounted electrolytics too. Like they, they aren't branded, they don't have names on them, but I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't Elma that made all those caps that failed on all those camcorders and stuff all those years. I would not be surprised at all if they were not Elma caps that were on them because uh, they really made terrible, terrible components. I mean, they're, they're all leaking. As you can see, they're all leaking. Every one of them. Well, there's the board rebuilt. All these caps have been swapped out on it. I'll just reinstall the board now and see if the machine will work. Okay, main board's installed. Snap in the timer board into place. Reconnect the connector that connects it to the other front board. Now I can put the front panel back on and test it out see whether it's going to do anything. Whether I'm going to get any hi-fi sound. That's the whole that's the whole goal here is to get the hi-fi sound back. Okay, and power it up. See whether we get any sound. We have hi fi sound. Excellent. And we have a good picture too.
And with that, I'm going to say this one's done. I'm not doing any more work on it. I've got this unit up and running. I've got my hi-fi sound back, got the power supply repaired, got the transport fixed, got the hi-fi sound back. So now I can reassemble the unit, put the power supply back in. I'll just attach just one screw for now, just to hold it in place while I put the bottom cover on. Now one thing I'm not testing it for is I'm not going to test the tuners, like the, the tuner on it. And, and the reason I'm not bothering with testing the tuner is that uh, there are no analog broadcasts anymore. A machine like this, it's going to be used exclusively for playing back tapes for digitizing. So the owner of it is really only concerned about playback quality, picture and sound. Okay, I'm just going to try a Super VHS tape in it now and see how it performs. Okay, there's a Super VHS tape playing. I can't let that play because, uh, you know, Columbia Pictures or something will, will take my video down. But that was a, a few seconds, a few frames of a B-grade movie called uh, Pump Up the Volume about a radio pirate. It was a... <laughs> it, was a it was a stupid movie that I recorded years and years and years ago from, uh, I think it was off one of the cable channels. Anyway, it was recorded in the EP speed, and uh, in the EP speed, it, it still looks pretty respectable. And that's about all I can show of that. Anyway, this one's done. I had to put the shield on here in order to not get severe interference from the uh, plasma set, because it just loves to blow out the picture. Anyway, this one, as I say, is done. I'm going to throw this one back together and send this one on its way. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one again real soon. Bye for now.